So Donald Trump, who's running for president, says to Megyn Kelly that she's a bimbo on Twitter. Actually retweeted someone's comment about Megyn Kelly to that effect. I want to get this on the record. I may disagree with Megyn Kelly politically. I may think that Megyn Kelly has said things that I construed as being racist. But the last, the last adjective I would associate with Megyn Kelly is bimbo. In fact, I haven't met a woman in a long, long time for which I ever came close to even associating with that comment. And I have never used that comment to describe a woman in my entire life. And I say that proudly about my 53 years on this earth. That was completely 1,000% wrong. It was then wrong to double down, as Trump did, and say that Megyn Kelly looked at him as if he, she had blood coming out of her eyes or, or whatever. Wow. But then what's fascinating is the media, the mainstream media, what's left of it, which is still quite substantial, actually, keeps waiting for Donald Trump to fall. And folks, Donald Trump is not going to fall. It seems we go through this every four years where some member of the media, the mainstream media again, forgets what it is that actually causes campaigns to crumble. And it's not so much what the candidate says as what the candidate either did illegally or, 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 or look like he or she did illegally. Remember, I think it was Christine O'Donnell in Delaware who had the campaign finance screw up. The constant assertions regarding spending and other violations can really sink a campaign much quicker than what a campaigner says by and large. Because you can say something stupid, but it doesn't necessarily mean your campaign is going to be impacted. It's how you bounce back. But I want to emphasize something, having said that, we have reached, in, in my mind, I'm drawing this graph, a, a fascinating point in our history. This, this graph represents a kind of intensity of media over time, whereas, let's say, 1980, it was here, we had the advent of cable television later, and then the internet in the late 90s, and now we've got social media and mobile here, okay? Where we are here, this graph is such that you have the this on this line, this is the intensity, this is the intensity of feeling about a candidate, regardless of commentary. That's my unique graph on this side. Again, intensity of feeling about a candidate regardless of what that candidate says or commentary, all right? That's here. Notice how these two line up. point that I'm making is that because we have so much media here, Donald Trump has tapped into that, and he is basically the human megaphone for the GOP casual viewer, those people that have been between 10 and maybe 100 Twitter followers out there on television speaking their speaking their minds for them. And so that's why he ranks high in the polls and that's why he seems impervious to defeat because we we've, we've never been in this situation before not even in 2012 to this intensity and certainly not in 2008 or any of the other years past. You can call look at call my graph, right? This is unique. And because you're dealing with somebody who's already media savvy in Donald Trump, who has several million Twitter followers and basically draws a huge viewing audience wherever he goes, what that translates into is the same kind of fan base dynamic that impacts the success in sports. The casual fan is drawn to that organization. And when the casual fan is drawn to buy, in this case, View, view, view style, all right, then it's a good possibility that that buy is going to translate into a real profit for that product. In this case, the product is the Trump candidacy for president. What I'm trying to say basically is that don't think that Donald Trump isn't going to get votes from the casual person. He stirs people at a time when another perfect part moment in our society. We are so hyper-diverse 
that everybody is pissed off with the other person. And they and people are basically being driven down to not say what they really think, okay? And here Donald Trump is saying what he really thinks because he has enough what we call F you money, right? Which makes him really attractive, not just to Republicans, but I will venture a guess to some Democrats as well. And some of you saying hearing this will say, oh, well, Zinni is basically saying that Donald Trump is a great candidate. He will support him. No, I support Hillary Clinton because I believe a woman should be president. And I said that unequivocally, just as I would say that I believed, and I said this with President Obama. Barack Obama was the right president who happened to be black at the right time because he was the kind of guy that you voted for in high school or junior high school and middle school, all right? The black guy that everybody liked, who was the smartest guy in the room, but now as an adult, you're ready to vote for that person for president. We did it twice. But now it's turn. It's turn. Hillary's turn. I have some concerns which I'll address in another video, but it's Hillary's turn. And I'm saying that absolutely flat out. Now, back to Donald Trump. Donald Trump will give her a challenge. And the Republican Party better hope that Donald Trump doesn't jump over and become an independent candidate. Because if he does, with the large number of independents in this country, he could completely destroy the party politics that we've enjoyed for all of our history. I am not kidding you. We're at a unique moment in time that should not be discounted. That is why Donald Trump is able to get away with what he does to this point. Now, what will be his downfall? I'll tell you what I think that downfall would be, although it will not happen. But let me study this a little bit more before I make the next video on that.